Hey, it's Tanner Shuck from TrueStrength.co, and today I'm gonna cover training for aesthetics versus training for performance. Or in other words, training to look good versus training to be good. I'll be the first to tell you, I've never trained just to look good. I've always trained to perform and get the very most out of my body. I played Division I college football and competed and won in the sport of CrossFit at the highest level. I always maintain a lean and muscular physique. I sit around 205 pounds and I'm always eight to 10% body fat year round. Do I do this just to look good? No, it's just a byproduct of my lifestyle and how I train. I also wanna say I'm 100% natural. I've never done any kind of steroid or performance enhancing drug. All right, so now that we've briefly covered my background, I'm gonna do my absolute best to be as objective and unbiased as possible to tell you how to train for aesthetics or performance. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. So if you just wanna look jacked at the beach or just look good naked, let's talk training for aesthetics. First off, I wanna say, there is no best physique look. The show look isn't necessarily better than the go look. It just all depends on what your priority is. There's a reason bodybuilders train the way they do. They're not all just dumb meatheads that pump themselves full of steroids either. In fact, elite bodybuilders are some of the most switched on and intelligent individuals you'll meet in the industry. Don't believe me? Just do some research on Dorian Yates who in my opinion is the greatest bodybuilder of all time. These guys are muscle building experts and they dedicate their lives to being jacked and shredded. Bodybuilding gyms look very different than CrossFit gyms. They are packed with every machine and piece of equipment possible and mirrors are everywhere. Why? Because in many ways, training with machines is superior to training with free weights, especially if your primary goal is muscle hypertrophy. Well-designed training machines allow you to reach true muscular failure with far less risk of injury compared to free weights. Have you ever done high rep heavy leg presses or a mechanical drop set on chest press? I think you know what I'm talking about. When used properly, machines can and will blow up your muscles and you can often get more work done in the form of sets and reps using machines compared to free weights. And generally speaking, more work equals more hypertrophy. Do you really think bodybuilders or aesthetic lifters really care how strong their core is? or whether or not they use their stabilizer muscles, they don't give a fuck. In fact, most bodybuilders and aesthetic lifters want to keep their waist and hips as skinny and symmetrical as possible. That's actually why many bodybuilders don't perform barbell squats or deadlifts, because squats and deadlifts build a thick core, which apparently isn't aesthetically pleasing. In fact, if you just want to look good, you really only need to train your show muscles, which would be your pecs, arms, lats, shoulders, abs, you actually don't need to be strong or fit at all if you just wanna look good. So let's discuss which exercises and machines give you the show look. For pecs, seated chest press machines are great for hypertrophy and every guy loves doing cable crossovers. Even though this exercise is nothing special in my opinion and you'll get way more pec development from compound pressing exercises such as the incline dumbbell bench press. Guys also love the pec deck machine to get supposedly defined pecs or build the upper lower pec. But that's what idiots do. If you want more defined pecs, just get your nutrition on point so you're shredded. You can have the best lower or upper pecs in the world, but if they're covered in a layer of fat, no one's going to know, regardless of how many lower pec exercises you do. Shoulders. I'll be the first to admit, my delts are my weakest body part, but not because I don't train them. Some of the best ways to train delts for hypertrophy are going to be seated supported dumbbell strict presses with a neutral grip and doing a ton of lateral raises. Dumbbell lateral raises and any machine lateral raises are great for delt hypertrophy. Generally, I recommend three to five sets of high reps taken close to failure each set. Arms. Let's be real. Every guy likes to train arms, whether you're an aesthetic lifter or not. Even though I train nothing like a bodybuilder, I have respectable arms. And I actually made an entire YouTube video about how you can build your arms using just a rope, which you can watch right here. But for the aesthetic lifter, the absolute most bang for your buck arm exercise would be the incline dumbbell curl with a slow negative. Alternatively, if you have access to some decent arm machines, those can work well too. My least favorite arm exercise ever would have to be the double bicep cable curl. Not only do you look like an idiot doing a low value for time bicep exercise, you also look like an asshole taking up both sides of the cable machine. Don't be an now for triceps. You can never go wrong with the classic tricep cable pushdown, which is great for the lateral head. But similar to biceps, if you've got access to tricep machines, those can work well for hypertrophy too. But if you're serious about having big arms, make sure you train the long head of the triceps, which makes up the majority of the muscle, and those are best trained with skull crushers. 
but my personal favorite is the incline overhead extension with the easy bar as you get a huge range of motion and this really blows up the long head of the tricep. Regarding the medial head of the tricep, those are supposedly best trained with underhand grip tricep press downs. But honestly, I think those are pretty much a waste of time. Now let's talk about the lats. If you're an aesthetic lifter, you want that V taper look and you can never go wrong with a classic lat pull down machine or wide grip pull ups or basically any pull up or lat pull down variation for that matter. I've said it before, the strict pull up is the best exercise to develop a lean and muscular upper body. Basically, if you can bang out strict pull ups, you're gonna be strong, lean, and jacked. So if you're kind of fat or you're just weak, you may have to settle for lat pull downs, which is still an amazing exercise. But like I said before, if you can rep out strict pull ups, you know you're gonna have a solid aesthetic look. Alternatively, you can hit your lats with other lat pull down or rowing machines, which work great for lat hypertrophy too. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you wanna be an aesthetic lifter and just have the show look, you really only need to focus on a few body parts. Pecs, shoulders, arms, lats, and of course your abs. But all you have to do for abs is just not eat like an ass. So now that we've covered how to train for aesthetics, let's talk about how to train for performance. The biggest problem with achieving the go look is you actually have to do a lot of hard ass work. Now, am I saying elite bodybuilders don't work hard? Absolutely not. But what I am saying is an elite bodybuilder in no way, shape or form could keep up with an elite CrossFitter or an elite strongman. But that same CrossFitter or strongman could most likely do any workout of that elite bodybuilder. Now that's not a criticism, it's just a fact. But it's important to keep in mind, their goals and training styles are just different. Basically what I'm saying is, you can't train like a pretty boy. If you want the go look, you actually have to take your training seriously and go hard and lift heavy. That's no offense to the pretty boys out there, it's just the truth. When I see a guy with big pecs, big shoulders, big arms, and a skinny waist, I immediately know that guy just trains for looks. And again, there's nothing wrong with that. But when I see a guy with jack traps, big glutes and hamstrings, and a dense midsection, I would definitely think twice before I would pick a fight with him. Do you think NFL football players or Olympic weightlifters go into the gym just to train their shoulders and pecs? Hell no. Real athletes use their training to improve their performance for their respective sport. In other words, when you train for performance, your training revolves around how to get faster, fitter, stronger, and more athletic. Athletes don't care how to train their medial delt versus their rear delt, or what the best exercise is to train the long head of the triceps. Training for performance involves setting goals, lifting heavier, improving work capacity, and setting new PRs. And when you start training this way, you naturally develop a strong, muscular, athletic, and resilient body. So if you wanna have the go look, you need to focus on traps, low back, forearms, a thick core, hamstrings, and glutes. So now let's discuss which exercises and machines give you the go look. Traps. You can't achieve the go look without a decent set of traps. And the best way to get your traps bigger, in my opinion, is just to focus on getting as strong as possible. Anecdotally speaking, I've built my traps with years of heavy deadlifts and cleans. Heavy farmer's walks are incredible for trap development too. But my absolute favorite way to directly train my traps are shrugs scraping the rack. Low back. Deadlifts. That's all I gotta say. There's no better exercise to build or strengthen your low back than the deadlift. I'm a firm believer that all humans should deadlift as we should all have the ability to pick up a heavy object off the ground. I've always preferred a conventional style deadlift, but any style of deadlift is great. So whether you prefer sumo, trap bar, or a kettlebell deadlift, it doesn't matter. Just find a deadlift variation that works for you and do it. Bonus points. If you wanna blow up your low back and suffocate yourself at the same time, do heavy front loaded carries. But my guess, you'll probably avoid these because they're hard as fuck. But that's exactly why you should do them. Thick core. A thick core goes hand in hand with a strong low back. Just know, if you wanna look strong, you need to have a barrel for a midsection. So how do you get a thick core, you ask? Again, I hate being the bad guy, but it's this reoccurring theme of hard ass work. To keep it simple, focus on getting as strong as possible with heavy squats, deadlifts, rows, and weighted carries. Trust me, if you do that consistently for years, you will get a thick core. Forearms. I'm not sure if there's anything more feminine than a man with a weak grip. Unfortunately, forearms are one of the most overlooked and undertrained muscles in the body. So if you're serious about looking strong, you better be serious about having strong forearms. Here's my favorite ways to train them. Legless rope climbs. There's honestly not a better exercise to build your grip strength or biceps than legless rope climbs. 
Bent arm false grip holds are another extremely underrated forearm exercise as well. Hand grippers, body weight dead hangs, wrist rollers, and plate pinches are definitely worth mentioning too. Glutes. First off, I'm not a girl that just wants to flaunt my ass all over the internet for popularity. So please don't get butt hurt that I didn't include the hip thrust on this list. Quick side note about that, no one gives a f how much you can hip thrust. So here are my favorite ways to train glutes. Rear foot elevated split squats. I'd consider this exercise to be the king of single leg training. I'm also a huge proponent of reverse lunges and walking lunges. I also love hitting rear foot elevated single leg deadlifts to specifically hit your glutes. Hamstrings. Strong hamstrings are incredibly important for athletic performance and should be trained from both a shortened and lengthened position. My absolute favorite ways to strengthen them would be the Nordic curls or its progressions such as the glute ham raise or the Nordic deadlift. I also love Romanian deadlifts and stiff-legged deadlifts. Weighted back extensions with an increased range of motion light up the hamstrings as well. So now that we've covered how to train both for aesthetics and performance, let's briefly cover the pros and cons of each training style. Pros for training for aesthetics. Builds muscle, requires less effort, develops discipline and consistency, improves health. Cons for training for aesthetics. Narcissistic and egotistical, boring training style, use of PEDs is prevalent. Pros for training for performance. Results driven, discover your true potential, a great physique is a byproduct, strong, functional, more athletic, training is more varied and fun, more flexibility with your diet. Cons of training for performance, increased risk of injury, PED use is still prevalent, you have to work much harder. If anything, I hope this video made you realize that training for aesthetics and performance do not have to be mutually exclusive. In fact, for the vast majority of people, I would argue they can and should go hand in hand. So if you want to have the show muscles and the go muscles, make sure to check out my Straight Up Strength or Fit Aesthetics program available at truestrength.co or in the description below. It includes a seven day free trial, a free anabolic meal plan, and custom calories and macros so you know exactly what and how to eat to reach your goals. Well, that's all I got for you today, guys. If you like the video, please leave a comment and let me know what topics you want to see me cover in the future. Also, if you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe, and turn on your post notifications so you never miss another video. Remember, don't just be strong, be truly strong. I'll see you guys soon.